final segment of the show for today. We're oh talking God. to uh, Professor uh, Gloria McKissick from uh, Tennessee State University and Leo Littert, uh, who is the president of the uh, African uh, Association uh, in uh, Nashville, uh, African yeah. Cultural Alliance uh, in Nashville. And uh, both have given us some information in reference to the uh, civil rights movement in Nashville, especially uh, the uh, sit-in movement. Let's talk about uh, the uh, civil rights movement, uh, the national civil rights movement, and how that, that came to be, and what you're trying to uh, do in reference to that movement, uh, Professor McKissick. Well, the organization is what I want to focus on that, that we represent is the Nashville Civil Rights Veterans Association. Mm -hmm. And we started in uh, 2010, uh, January the 15th, Martin Luther King Day, mm -hmm. with a uh, program at, at downtown Arcade of uh, Woolworths, where it, where it all started in Nashville back in 1960 with the uh, uh, sit-ins. And uh, Matthew Walker Jr. is our president, Kwame is vice president, I'm a board member. We have about 13 active members and we encourage others to join our organization. Actually, the city is full of people who mm -hmm. directly or indirectly mm -hmm. were involved in the city and you didn't have actually have to sit in mm -hmm. to be involved mm -hmm. because there were community leaders, there were housewives, just ordinary people, mm -hmm. you know, who who If who you made helped. any kind of contr contribution that you think then you could be a member of this organization, is that what we're saying? Any kind yes, of real yes, contribution? Yes, if, if, you, if you were involved, food, yes, yes, yes. Because like when the students uh, were arrested in 1960 with, with that first uh, uh, um, uh, sit-in, uh, downtown, uh, the community raised fifty thousand, fifty thousand dollars. The students turned it down and, and chose, you know, the, jail, the, no the, bail. to jail. You know, no bail, jail. But mm -hmm. they they raised money, they provided food, they just did all. They they did telephone calling and so forth. The Easter boycott. You know, people were involved in in the boycott. You know, which was the most powerful tool. You got clothing, uh, yeah. uh, by yeah. the way, that that hit that hit the city economically. Mm -hmm. That 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 boycott. Yeah, you yeah. know, they always showed uh, people at the uh, courthouse and mm -hmm. Diane Nash. You know, asking mm -hmm. the mayor that question: Did he think that you know mm -hmm. that uh, the county should be integrated? And mm -hmm. he said yes, but it really wasn't that simple. Mm -hmm. It took, like Kwame said, all those people sacrificing. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a long road to get there, and it was hurting those merchants in, in their pocketbook. And that's why they desegregated those lunch counters. Okay, it wasn't just something that happened on the spur of the moment. Nothing happened on the spur of the moment. But anyway, we're an organization, and what we try to do is to reach out to the community. Uh, uh, our target is youth. We go into the schools, we will speak at programs, we carry uh, young people on, on trips. We mm -hmm. try to educate the public mm -hmm. and let them know ab about our legacy, our past, uh, hopefully so that they will understand the world they live in mm -hmm. today better and can go on and continue to make uh, changes because there are a lot of things that still need to be done. I have mm -hmm. a young friend that says, Glory, when you gonna get off the bus? And I said, well, I guess <laughs> I'll get off the bus mm -hmm. when Jesus calls, calls me because it's not time. over yet. Mm -hmm. That's when I get mm -hmm. off the bus. So, you know, we have new Jim Crowism. Mm -hmm. It's not over yet. And that's the main thing we're trying to do is to keep Keep the story, keep keep it keep it alive, mm -hmm. keep it real, uh, and make sure that the truth is told because mm -hmm. a lot of people are, are putting out misinformation, yeah. mm -hmm. and we try to correct that because mm -hmm. we were there and they're secondary to mm -hmm. to those uh, events. But uh, we are very active uh, in in the community, and one of the main focuses that we have now that Kwame may, may like to address is trying to get this city to put up a monument mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to commemorate and recognize the struggles that people went through. Mm -hmm. Some people went on to national acclaim like John Lewis and Bevel and Marion Barry. They became mayors and congresspeople. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people suffered. Uh, some became 
because of the movement became alcoholics, committed suicide, mm -hmm. have injuries and mental and physical things, you know, and people suffered. Mm -hmm. And this city, uh, I, I would just say it is shameful mm -hmm. that we do not have something to commemorate mm -hmm. that. We're known as the music city. We ought to be mm -hmm. known as the cradle of the civil rights mm -hmm. movement. And we should have something to show for that. We've got the library, but you got to go in the library mm -hmm. to know that. They've got the new convention mm -hmm. center there. Why don't we have a, 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 a place there where people can get up and, mm -hmm. and have a walking tour mm -hmm. of the downtown area that would end up at some significant tribute to those that have suffered. Now that has happened around a large number of cities, right? yeah. has, has it not? Yeah. Almost every city, city except, yeah. except, Almost every city uh -huh. except Nashville. Let's, uh, during these last few minutes, let's uh, talk about the uh, Civil Rights Monument and let's talk about it within the context of you being involved in the uh, Soldiers Monument, uh, the uh, Nashville uh, 1864 Battle of Nashville and et cetera and all the work that you and others did in reference to bringing that forth and perhaps we might be able to use that uh, as an example of what could be done in the, uh, with the Civil Rights Monument as such. Well, in 1979, <clears throat> we started paying tribute to the black men who fought right here in Nashville during the Civil War Battle of 1864. After about 20 years, we realized there was no monument to those men who gave their lives, their last full measure, as Lincoln said in the Gettysburg Address, right? We raised $85,000 over a five-year period we erected the only life-size bronze statue of a black soldier in America. We put that in the National Military Cemetery right now on Galton Road. Now, it took a lot of people. It took veterans. It took uh, a lot of white congregations. It took a lot of historians, the Boy Scouts, to raise that money. But that statue is there forever to give testimony that we helped build this nation with our blood. That's the kind of... Kind of uh, attributes I think Nashville should be proud of. They have the only statue. Same thing with the civil rights. Every city has a major monument. We just got back from a trip with 20 kids to Birmingham and Montgomery, two days. They saw at least seven different examples of how those cities pay tribute to the people from those cities who made America better. You would think Nashville, being the best movement in the country, would have had a groundswell of support. Put, put at least $700,000 in a major monument. Say this is Nashville's contribution to the country. Music City is fine, but why not pay tribute to, to the fact that we were movement city along with Music City? And that's what we're wanting Nashville to do. We shouldn't have to beg people to do that. The Chamber of Commerce ought to say, we want to put Nashville on the map, like Birmingham. Because we did things that nobody did. And that should be something you target mm -hmm. for tourist attractions. That are supposed to come here just to see the monument that Nashville should have, should have had. Very good. And of course, we've just about ended this uh, show for today. Have you got any uh, additional statements, uh, Professor McKissick, to make in reference to the photographs that you have or how people might have access to uh, some of the information that you have there? Well, um, <laughs> These uh, photos, probably we'll see them uh, soon in, in the newspaper, but this, uh, like Kwame said, was just a group of children mm -hmm. um, that we carried. Uh, not only have we carried them to cities with monuments, but we've also mm -hmm. carried them to Clinton, uh, mm -hmm. Tennessee, mm -hmm. and other significant places that have to do with the civil rights movement. And we just hope that Nashville sees the importance, mm -hmm. not only of the movement, uh, the civil rights movement, the Nashville significance to the movement, but will get on board with us and help to make this uh, possible. Mm -hmm. This is important to our, to our youth mm -hmm. because they just don't know. And it's our responsibility mm -hmm. as their elders, as mm -hmm. their parents, and as a community mm -hmm. uh, to, to inform these young people. And, so and the rest of, of the nation. And both of you <laughs> believe that such a monument would be uh, an added attraction in a real sense to yes. draw people to uh, this great Nashville that we're all looking forward to, especially with the uh, addition of the uh, new convention center and et cetera. All of those things would be important and playing into what the two of you are talking about. Is that what we're saying here today? A absolutely. Very good. And of course, let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and... Good morning.